To produce power, an engine needs three things, air, fuel, and an ignition source. The air-fuel ratio is key. When we talk about the air-fuel mixture, it can be rich when there's too much fuel, it can be lean when there's not enough fuel, or it can be just right. When the air-fuel ratio is just right, the engine is burning fuel at maximum efficiency, which some people call the stoichiometric ratio, or even just stoic. Oxygen sensors play a very important role in all this. An O2 sensor measures the difference in oxygen in the air that's outside and inside the exhaust. It reports the finding to the ECU to calculate the exact amount of fuel the injector should pulse into the cylinder to create combustion. If the sensor detects unburned fuel, it'll relay a voltage signal to the ECU telling it to reduce the amount of pulse width to the injectors, depending on the demand of the driver's right foot and other conditions. In a closed loop system, the O2 sensor monitors the air-fuel ratio 100 times per second to make minor fuel trim corrections. Fuel can be added or reduced to ensure that this ratio is the stoichiometric ideal. Most newer O2 sensors come with a heating element encased in ceramic that quickly brings the tip up to temperature. The ideal life cycle of a typical heated O2 sensor is about 100,000 miles in normal conditions. Single wire, non-heated sensors tend to fail due to the buildup of soot on the ceramic element, which lengthens its response time and may altogether quit reading oxygen. With heated sensors, deposits are burned off during operation and failure usually results from a bad heater circuit or clogged converter. Another common cause of premature failure is when they become contaminated with grease or silicates, which are commonly used as corrosion inhibitors in some types of antifreeze. Oil leaks also can contaminate the probe tip with an oily black residue, leading to slow or no response. I'm Josh Cable, thanks for watching.